welcome back. Um, hope you guys had a great lunch out there. Um, we're changing things up a little bit. We're now, um, for this segment, this is going to be ACSC. What did I learn and why does it matter? Because I know some of you might be thinking that right now. Um, our guests on stage are ACSC graduates and are serving in a variety of command and leadership positions. And I'm going to introduce Lieutenant Colonel Damien Holtzclaw. He is the commander of the 38th Student Squadron, and he's going to serve as our moderator. And sir, the floor is yours. Thank you, ma'am. Mustangs. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> wow. We had a few in the audience. Hey, thank you guys uh, so much. First, I want to say thank you to the panelists for volunteering your time to come out and share your personal experiences with the audience here. And then also want to thank you guys for uh, joining us in this inaugural uh, first time event for LEDX. So to have an alumni panel come talk to you about Air Command and Staff College. So before I let these guys introduce themselves, what I want to do, I see a few of the uh, ROTC cadets in the room. So I just want to set the stage with uh, a little bit of introduction about what the program is. So ACSC, Air Command and Staff College is a 10 month program. Um, it's an IDE intermediate, intermediate developmental educational program for professional military education. So 10 months where we engross uh, 500 students in the art of war, learning about war theory, international relations, and the operational, joint operational planning. Um, and that's in 10 months, and they also earn a master's degree. The best thing, and I'll let these guys kind of talk about that, but the, uh, the program is broken up with sister servicemen, um, guard and reserve, so a TFI uh, compo component there as well, and about 70 different um, international officers from 68 different countries around the world. So a unique experience to um, network with folks from every walk of life. Um, in a 10 month period. So with that being said, uh, before we really get started, just go down the line and introduce yourselves, AFSC, your current uh, job and um, what class you were here at ACSC. All right, cool. Uh, Buck Benton, I am currently the uh, squadron commander of the introduction of Fighter Fundamental Squadron at Columbus Air Force Base, uh, the Black Knights. Got a couple of them in the crowd here to uh, heckle as well. So I was a ACSC class of 2014. Uh, after that, I went to USAFE, where I was on the A3 staff for a couple years before going to Columbus. Awesome. I'm Major Martin. Um, I currently am one of the DOs at ACSC, so shout out to Division Three out there. And um, I also teach there as well. And my husband and I, we're gonna be headed to Stugart and UCOM um, next summer, so we're excited for that opportunity. My name is uh, Major Mark Weems. I am, uh, <clears throat> I am an engineer by trade, 6'2", uh, acquisitions career field. Uh, I'm married, and my wife is in uh, Georgia area. I am a graduate of this last class, AY19, so just graduated this past summer. I'm currently working at the Air University Command Section. I'm the executive officer to the commander and president. My name is Mark Wilkie. I am from class uh, AY19 last year. I was very fortunate to get picked up for a job here at Maxwell Air Force Base as the Deputy Director of the 42nd Force Support Squadron, and that's uh, my career area is for support. Awesome. Again, thank you guys for being here with us. So we'll jump right into it. Um, as I was talking about earlier with the mission of Air Command and Staff College to educate and develop air-minded joint leaders. Um, and if General Pettis was here, he'd probably expand on that and talk about the why, right? And that's to enable our nation to deter our adversaries and support and defend the nation's interests in an increasingly complex and dangerous world. But that that's really is a broad mission statement, but it, it encapsulates a lot. But from each one of your perspectives, if you wouldn't mind sharing with the audience, just what did you take away from your personal experience here at Air Command and Staff College? Sure. <laughs> yeah. So. I would say that before uh, ACSE, I, I really saw myself as just the tactician. Uh, I was trying to get really good at my craft, which was uh, flying aircraft. And you're always uh, in this mindset of, do I want to continue on in the Air Force and make it a career, or, or do I want to go into the, the Guard Reserves, do I want to get out, do I want to fly commercial? Uh, and so I would say the first couple years of my Air Force career, that's kind of, I just felt myself as a pilot in the Air Force. 
And then uh, when I showed up here, that's when I kind of switched in my brain from hmm. being a, a pilot, a tactician, to a member of the profession of arms. Uh, and I was, you know, kind of zoomed out and exposed to more than just my little lane there flying F-16s or teaching uh, people how to fly to zooming out and teaching how to, or learning how to, uh, we integrate with our sister services, learning how the joint fight works, uh, thinking about organizing training and equipping, thinking about how am I going to now be the leader uh, to, to take our future Air Force into those domains that you t just talked about. So it was kind of a, an opportunity for me to zoom out a little bit uh, and get perspective. Awesome. I, I think with my perspective, um, what I got out of ACSC was, well, first of all, I'm a medical officer, some public health officer by trade, and it's, we don't, a lot of us don't have an opportunity to attend ACSC, so I felt very honored um, and privileged to have, um, have this opportunity to attend this program. And what AC, ACSC taught me was, um, and also value, was the complexity of, of war and also the utility of the joint planning process. So you really get a better understanding of um, our joint partners, um, not only within the U.S. with our sister services, but also with our um, international um, officers. We have about 68, um, or we, we have a lot of IOs that come from about 68 countries in ACSC. So you really get um, just a vast opportunity to network and meet a lot of uh, different people and learn and, and have that ability to share your experiences with them. I'll, I'll piggyback off of Lieutenant Colonel Benton. I mean, just the sheer amount of uh, shared experiences you're able to have. Um, you know, I, I come from an engineering background, acquisitions, <clears throat> a lot of office work, not too too much deployment. Uh, basically, it's just a, it's very very different. Uh, you know, my average day was you know just looking at a lot of problem sets. You know, with a missile system or you know some sort of math problem or something like that. Uh, you know, the guy that sat next to me in my uh, in my ACSC class. You know, he was a security forces guy. He's commanded uh, you know like five squadrons already. You know, kicked people out of the air force. Uh, you know, just done, not that he's proud of that or whatever, but basically had a lot more <laughs> commander experiences than I had. I mean, up to that point, the, the, the most I had done was just, you know, talk to someone very sternly. Um, so basically, it's, uh, it's, it, it definitely gives you a, a different perspective on um, what, a, what your fellow officers have been through. Um, and in, in, and while we were going through the classes, basically, we were able to uh, share on that a lot. Basically, I learned, I, I picked up a lot of good points, a lot of good leadership points, a lot of bad ones as well. Um, but basically, you can learn from the mistakes of others is, is uh, what it comes down to from. Awesome. I've uh, been associated with the Air Force for about 37 years. Yes. <laughs> and when I got to go to school, it was just at around between 35 and 36. And what was interesting is, after being in this profession for that many years, I did not have the big picture of war, air power, international relations. And as a civilian, it's, it's a real privilege to be able to come to the school and, and, and participate. And now I feel as though I'm rounding off my profession. Um, some people, will, they'll, they'll look at ACSC and, and say, it's, it's not exactly what I need. Well, it depends on your perspective and what you're looking at. Um, we are professionals and we, our profession is war, primarily with the aspect of air power. And so being, being able to get that history of war, Clausewitz, yeah, Germany, mm -hmm. you know, Sun Tzu, so those things are still practiced today. So being able to look at that context and go back and see what's still valuable to us today and, and move forward, I think is, is really great. So for me, it was a rounding off uh, for the rest of my career. I've still got at least a good 10 years left in me uh, as a civilian, if not more. And I think I'm, I'm a more rounded uh, airman and professional. That's outstanding. Um, Mark, I, I want to start back with you on something you just talked about but before I ask. Um, so I had an opportunity to sit down with uh, Dean Forsyth a couple weeks ago, and um, we are just talking about what the program is, what it is not, what does it do, and what does it not do. Um, and I happen to agree with one of the things that he, that he mentioned is that ACSC is not supposed to prepare you for a specific task at your next job. That's not what it's supposed to do. Um, and I'd love to hear you guys' opinion on that. Um, but 
I'm going to relate that to what the COMAC talked to AY20 about. If you recall one of your CSSs, and he said the same thing to uh, AY19 uh, for when he come, came and visited you guys last year. But uh, General Holmes mentioned that in our development of our Air Force officer career, we, we pretty much have three careers. One, Buck, you talked about it uh, very early on, that it's primarily the responsibility that we hone our craft. Uh, we become the SME, the subject matter, matter expert in whatever we're doing, engineer, uh, finance officer, cyber, pilots, um, but you become that SME. Um, but then the second part of your career is where you hone in on the operational sense and how your function fits in the bigger picture of the Air Force and then how the Air Force fits in that bigger picture of the DOD um, system. So Mark, starting with you, you know, I recall last year when you introduced uh, General McDo mm -hmm. um, in front of AY19 when he came to speak to us. And you worked for General McDo when he was a colonel. Mm -hmm. So place in the context how ACSC with your wide operational and leadership experiences, I mean, you were the MAGCOM Chief Master Sergeant for AMC. No, I was, I was just a wing command chief. Oh, just the wing. For Colonel McDo. <laughs> Sorry, didn't mean to right. put you that far. But nonetheless, you've had a, a, a long career of um, managing a lot of resources and leading a lot of people. But how did ACSC just last year help expand your, um, your leadership level um, even more so? I think there's some, uh, what you said is really, is really good. This ACSC is not about a specific um, preparation for a specific job. And I think some people come here with that expectation, and, and that, that's the wrong expectation. It's a general knowledge. It's a building on our profession. And for me, um, several, uh, I think, awesome things, learning about the broad profession and being able to relate that to how the A1 community fits into um, the art of war and air power and international relations. Uh, we spend a lot of time focused on, as the tacticians, working in our specific career field, and we, we don't spend a lot of time getting the bigger picture. And it was really um, phenomenal being in a class I had a Marine, a uh, soldier, um, pilots from Lebanon and Colombia, and hearing those perspectives uh, and hearing what they thought about things that maybe I had a bias on. And so it really does open up the aperture of, of, of your thinking. The other thing that I think is really good about ACSC is it, it honed my skills on critical thinking because you know when, when you go and you, you read the, the volumes of stuff that they, they give you, um, when I came, I, I originally thought they wanted to hear a particular message. I was supposed to give them the right answer. But here I was being told, no, you got to question these authors, Clausewitz. You, you got, don't just take what they say for granted, so you have to interrogate what you're reading. And I think that is an amazing skill that you, you take away from ACSE that uh, as you get up th and you have to read volumes of information as you, as you gain in rank, you, you're going to have to be critical. You're going to have to ask tough questions. And you can't just take an expert in a particular career field that they've got all the answers. You may have a question that's going to set things on the right track when it was on the wrong track. So just a, a, a lot of great information that just helps move you forward um, from, what I, from what I was experienced. So even though I had that experience uh, as a command chief, uh, I think I'm better prepared as leader now after going through ACSC. Outstanding. Anybody else have anything different than what Chief mentioned? Colonel Holtzka, I think that's a, that's a fantastic question, or a question that you presented. Um, you know, it's really not about preparing you for the next job, because when we come into ACSC, we're already um, tactical experts mm -hmm. in our field. But um, really what ACSC is set to do is, again, to develop those critical thinking skills, um, being able to question authors, um, consider the bias of certain authors, um, understand what thesis or argument that pr they're presenting um, in the different books we read. But also, it gives us a better understanding of our security environment based off the different classes that we have to take, as well as historical perspectives, um, all of which are very important um, in developing those critical thinking skills because you get the, more of those contexts and that background. Um, and then lastly, really ACSC is also designed 
um, with this network capability. So um, being able to network with such a di diverse set of students um, is just a, a phenomenal opportunity for us. Awesome. So, um, you know, try to clue you guys into where most of the students are right now for the panels, and a lot of you know, but uh, uh, so these guys have just finished finishing up uh, term C, so they're entering into uh, the last term here. Um, a lot of them, you know, we're starting to get the itis a little bit, ready to get out of here. Uh, a lot of them don't have orders yet, so Mark, they're probably going to be over there knocking on your door and holding you hostage. But um, ACSE, when we talk to them in August, um, we remind them or at least start to inform them that it is a um, extremely fast mental marathon. Um, why, right? It, uh, it's, a, it's a long year that happens extremely fast, extremely fast. Um, and it's a different, different year in which that you're no longer a part of a, a, an operational mission, right? Uh, we have our academic mission here, but uh, you're not in a team sense working together. This is an individualized um, look at developing yourself to be a better professional. And it's challenging. It is extremely challenging. Um, so it, along with those professional challenges, uh, we have life happens here at ACSC, right? So how do you balance um, life with, oh my goodness, I got three papers due at the same time and all of that good stuff. So a lot of learning happens here. How did ACSC affect your personal leadership philosophy um, after graduating? Yeah, I think it's a framework that you that you learn. You know, the adage that you, you're never going to be you're never going to have as much free time as you do right now, hmm. as you continue on with your career, uh, is extremely true. I'm sure some of you were told when you're showing up to a, or received your assignment to ACSC, like, oh, you're going to love it. You're going to go golfing every day. It's half days. You're not going to have to study hard. It's going to be a break. And then you get here, and then all of a sudden you realize there's lots of reading. There's lots of writing. You're actually spending uh, a lot of your weekends uh, on the computer at your home office writing papers and having to, to balance that family time. And uh, I remember, we talked about expectations earlier, right? I remember I poorly managed my wife's expectations of ACSE from bad advice that I received coming in. So taking that mentality now, moving forward after ACSE, I, I kind of learned that everybody is busy. No matter what MADCOM you're in, what's your AFSC, everybody uh, works extremely hard, long days, and has to manage not only uh, professional goals, but you know personal aspirations and uh, taking care of your family. So uh, what I would say, the tool that I, I would offer you is uh, have that framework of what's important for you. Uh, this is an opportunity where you can in an academic situation, really think about uh, how am I going to act as a leader in the future? Uh, if you're going straight to staff, uh, you, you have a little bit of time before you're thrown into a command role. Uh, you're never going to be completely ready, but you, you have the opportunity to be prepared. And this is the year where you become prepared for those command roles where you're going to have a lot ask of you professionally, but you still have to maintain the family balance. And so having frameworks of what's important, and, and everybody has to answer that on their own, what's important to you uh, is probably one of the, as nebulous as that sound, it's probably one of the most important things that you can take away from ACSC. Awesome. Money is? Okay. All right, we'll, we'll soften it up a little bit. So um, each year the, the class somewhat takes, takes on a different um, vibe of their own, a different character, if you will. Um, but if you could each describe one of the most uh, memorable moments that you had at, at ACSE, whether it's within your own family or within the class itself. I'll go. <clears throat> uh, for me, I would say the International Culture Day events. 
Uh, those were so basically two days. We talked. We already talked about the uh, you know the uh, the almost 70 international uh, officer countries that we have with us. Uh, basically, a day where you know you basically everybody gets together. Uh, a lot of food is involved. Uh, sometimes alcoholic beverages, but basically you know just walking around two hangars full of uh, of international delicacies was was mm -hmm. awesome. And I will, you know, I will let you know that I did my part, even in my position now, to <laughs> represent the Air University Command Section to uh, go back and partake uh, this year as well. That was, that was <laughs> having, the, having the internationals is awesome, and I'm sure everybody is aware by now in your ACSC class of who always asks questions during the lectures, right? There's always that one person, right? And so we had a, uh, he was from Uganda, his name was Peter, and every single lecture didn't matter the subject, uh, would stand up and ask a question in his awesome, you know, Ugandan accent. Uh, and it would just, by the end of the program, everybody would look to Peter and like, let's go, Peter, it's time right. to ask a question. And he <laughs> right. would get up and ask, and it, it was a lot of, you know, as crazy as that sounds, one of my most memory, memorable experiences is having the internationals, especially Peter from Uganda, always stand up and make us laugh. So I, I, I got to echo that from, from Buck. Uh, so he and I were classmates, and um, so that is my most memorable experience as well, and Chatham, Chatham House rules applies, I should have mentioned that, but uh, so during a CSS, same person, um, it was when our CSAF at the time was here, and he was giving a speech on leadership, and uh, so talking about the do's and don'ts of leadership, and um, so Peter uh, just Say, well, if you come to my country, you, you can have many wives. You won't have to have that problem. And, and so the CSAF had a little fun with it at the time and say, well, can I have dual citizenship? So, <laughs> so um, just those times like that um, make it really memorable uh, and, and really hone in on what was most valuable here and talking a little bit about those relationships and things of that nature. Um, so again, these guys are entering into the last term. What would you recommend to them um, as far as something that they should think about, uh, reflect on in the next 30 to 45 days before they walk across the stage and graduate to get out of here? What would be something that you would recommend that they at least think, think a little bit more on before uh, graduating? Let's say you got, you're going in your last term I assume it's the joint joint, joint planning, war fighting. Mm -hmm. joint war fighting. Um, so for a guy like me, that was all brand new. That was very exciting. Um, I, I knew a little bit about airplanes, so I was hoping I would have a role, you know, in the joint planning with, with the Air Force. They made me the Army commander, which was really. So uh, I learned a lot about tanks and other things. But a, as you go into this this last term, what I found myself doing is really rethinking my priorities throughout ACSE and the time that I was spending. I heard a lot of senior officers come and talk about uh, making sure that you put your priorities in place. If, if you came here and your priority is, is, is spending time with your family and you haven't done that, um, this is it. Uh, this is your last chance. You're, st you're still going to do your work. You're still going to uh, put what, what's necessary into it. Uh, but I began to realize that I needed to really spend time, because my wife was here with me, that I needed to spend some more time with her because I had not spent that time that I should have because I was involved very much in the academics and trying to do, the, do your best. And, and I don't dismiss that. You ought to do that. But think about this as you're getting ready to go to your next job. I'll tell you the job I'm in now, uh, it's, it's a lot of work. There's a lot of time and a lot of effort, not just while I'm there at the job, but after job, thinking about it. And so take advantage of any time that you can to, to spend with your family, um, if at all possible. I'll, um, I'll say two things. Uh, first, um, you know, especially in the joint war fighting part, I, I just remember so many funny stories from that. You know, the overall, I, I'll say the whole, you know, this kind of goes back to what you were saying before. ACSE, it's hard to, you have a, you have an overall vision and overall goal with the class, but it's over, overall hard to teach um, you know, joint planning and, and, and everything that they want to get, get out for every single career field. So 
in the end, you just kind of have to think about it. What are, what's the main point that they're trying to get across? Um, and just kind of take it for, take it for that. You know, critical thinking, um, whether it's joint planning process. Uh, you, overall, just try to try not to get bogged down into this individual task. You know, having to write you know this particular you know memo for for the uh, for the for the joint piece or whatever. Overall, just try to take a step back and and really think about the the main the main issues that they're trying to get across and and that's kind of the piece that will help help you kind of go in your in your future jobs being able to uh, think critically and write which I, I also goes into the second my second point uh, it really just helps you to uh, be more well-rounded as, as an officer. Uh, I heard a couple, you know, even the CSAF at one point uh, in some of the other meetings was saying that uh, we want pe we want our officers to know how to write better. Uh, if anything, that's one thing. If anything, I've gotten from ACSC, uh, active my active versus passive voice was practically <laughs> beaten into me. So uh, the my writing has gotten, I'll say, a lot better as well. Even in just another funny story that it was a requirement for even my job interview uh, for a Pentagon job. They asked me to send them uh, two copies of my, uh, of my ACSC work. So that was interesting. Uh, but overall, uh, yeah, like I said, uh, basically just try to take a step back. Don't get so bogged down in the details. Just, uh, just kind of think about what, what the, what this, what, what, why did they send me here? Why did the Air Force pay all this money to, to send us here? Critical thinking, networking, shared experiences, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I'll, I'll piggyback on the networking. Some of the relationships that I was able to uh, develop here uh, I've kept in contact with them. So some of the instructors, like you know, Bill DeMarco, Andy Christensen, Jason Womack, uh, Nicole Pinkham, you know, th these people that uh, you know I met at ACSE uh, as our instructors, uh, kept a relationship with them, and we were able to to bring you know Andy out to Columbus a couple times to talk to our folks. Uh, you know, ran back into Jason uh, when went the, the leadership development course. Uh, it's, it truly is a great networking opportunity. And so as you're finishing up your final you know, uh, quarter here, I would definitely work on that. If you're hesitant to, to reach out and ask for somebody's contact information, uh, don't be, just kind of get over yourself, ask for the contact information, and then uh, follow up with them. Because as you continue on with your career, you realize that there's gonna be a time when you need to reach back to a engineer, to somebody in the A1 community that often time could have been at this same uh, ACSC class with you to ask questions about how to solve problems when you get into the leadership roles. Awesome. Um, Any time, um, the success of an organization oftentimes is dependent on its ability to adapt, right? Um, and adapt to the current environment um, that's causing it to, to change. Um, as we've talked about with the mission here at ACSC, uh, we've, we've changed a lot of the curriculum. Uh, the administration has changed over time as well. But the mission has pretty much uh, stayed the same. Um, if you could change anything about the program itself, um, reshape or continue doing uh, now that you've been removed from the program for a while, what would you do? What would you change? I, I can start on this one. So um, there was a requirement um, in previous classes. Um, I was an AY19 graduate, but there used to be a requirement where everyone had to do an independent research um, mm -hmm. paper. And I naturally love research um, to begin with, but I would like to see that come back um, because I think there um, is is something special about research and um, it really helps you better um, with your critical thinking skills because you really have to identify a problem versus the problem and you have to go through some type of rigor which with um, developing your literature review your methods and then providing critically thinking and providing overall recommendations um, I had an opportunity um, when I was at ACSC to do independent research and um, Professor DeMarco who's the head at the leadership department, was my advisor. Um, and he was just fantastic to work with. And I learned um, so much by going through that process. Um, and I think it really helped me um, kind of work very independently on something and something I was very passionate about. So that's something I would like to see come back. Awesome. 
The, um, one of my electives, we got a chance to participate in that virtual, um, virtual experience where you're the commander and you have somebody come in. Oh, and yeah. uh, that, The practical nature of that, I was skeptical at first, but uh, it was really uh, a good practical experience. And I think in the leadership block, the more you can incorporate that. And I know in the commander's course, I believe that's more prevalent, but that would be, uh, I think, a great opportunity. And it, it's high pressure. Not only are you dealing with challenging circumstances, but you've got a whole audience of folks watching you. So there's a little pressure there too. And uh, listen, as you go through your career, you're gonna hit these pressure positions. And the more you can practice those, the better. So I think that would be a great addition. Um, we also talked, there, everybody thought the reading was an appropriate amount of reading. Did y'all like that? All, all the, uh, uh, I think that they could scale that back and, and uh, there was so much uh, information that was not, was not necessary. Uh, I, I get that part of it is teaching you to go through lots of information uh, and weed out what's important, but my experience was there was a lots of information that was just not relevant at all uh, and so we had to get to that information because there's a lot of reading anyway. You, if you actually targeted the reading more specifically or provided that reading in, in packets and then that would be more helpful to really learn what you need to learn. Um, I, I wouldn't want to scale it down too much, but that's my experience, this the number of books. Uh, what, what we end up doing, and you probably did the same thing, is uh, we developed a teamwork exercise where we split the reading up between different members of the flight and said, okay, we're just going to we're going to split it up. We're all going to do summaries, and then we shared the summaries with each other. So we did it, in essence, on our, by our, on our own um, because we just couldn't get it all read on our own. So, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else on that question? Um, well, guys, I, I really do appreciate uh, you guys volunteering your, your time to come on out um, and talk to us about your personal experiences. Um, again, this was our opportunity. Uh, to share with you the crux of what it truly means to um, uh, go through ACSC and some of those uh, traits that we uh, tend to value the most once we have departed. Um, so oftentimes when you're going through the fire, you don't really understand um, the jewel that's, going, that's being burned inside of you. So um, I, again, thank you guys so much for your time.